This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by lynda.com. What's up everyone? John Wrencher from Techno Buffalo here. I've been checking out this guy, LG's latest iteration of its G lineup. This is the appropriately named G3. I wouldn't get a chance to do an unboxing because it didn't come in a box, but I want to share my thoughts and impressions, give you guys a hardware tour, and let you know what you could expect when you pick up your new phone. All right, so here is the G3 all dressed up in a very attractive business suit. We didn't get a chance to do an unboxing the phone because it didn't come in a box. So I want to give you guys a hardware tour, an overview, and give you guys some very first impressions. So let me do a real quick spec overview for you. You're looking at a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440 pixel display. That's got a whopping 534 PPI, meaning if you did the math, it is Quad HD, which is damn impressive. Uh, Android 4.4.2 at launch. Powering this beast is a 2.5 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon 801 chip. Um, kind of oddly, two or three gigs of RAM, depending on a region. Uh, available in storage size of 16 or 32, but you can expand that with micro SD up to 128 gigs. Uh, 13 megapixel camera on the back with laser focus. Uh, and a 2.1 megapixel sensor lives here on the front. The rest of the stuff you'd expect from a Superphone 802.11 AB, GN, and AC, Bluetooth 4.0 and a 3000 milliamp hour battery all wrapped up with a nice NFC bow. So let's like talk about the design here first before I do a sort of a tour of everything around it. This phone is gorgeous uh, to look at and sort of a slew of Android phones that kind of look the same. I think this one really stands out. Um, the white here, I think is a really nice touch. Well, I think it would have looked cool, totally all done uh, in black. You could be looking at what's an early version, I guess, of what's going to be the Nexus 6. And if true, I think all of the Android purists are going to be really excited. LG knocked this one so far out of the park. It is a beautiful phone to look at and to hold. Um, so this 5.5 inch screen, we'll talk about that in just a minute. You've got on-screen navigation, so no sort of physical uh, capacitor button. If you turn the phone on, you can configure how you want these to look, either black or white, and whether or not you want multitasking on left or right. It's kind of a nice touch. So LG left the back and volume buttons here on the back of the device. I wasn't the biggest fan of it on the G2. I didn't think it added much, but it's much easier to find here um, on the G3 and sort of a more pronounced home button. So way, way, way easier. Uh, but the reason I thought it didn't really matter all that much because LG's got the awesome knock feature. So you can double tap on something. But if you double tap on the home screen, it'll turn it off, double tap again, turn it back on so you don't have to even use those home button if you don't want to all that often. It works really, really well here. Uh, so obviously no volume buttons or anything on the left or right side. You've almost a totally bezel-less experience and it's kind of crazy to see a phone that actually has that. Uh, on the bottom, you've got your charger and 3.5 millimeter headset jack with some microphones. And on the top, same, more microphones. You've got a, the SK Telecom, which is Korean. They've got sort of uh, antennas built in for some TV streaming. Certainly US versions uh, are not going to have that. So ignore that and know that it's just not a stylus. I wanted to point that out in case people are like, what is that in the corner? Uh, so the back is plastic, but it's got kind of a metal coating on it. Uh, it still feels plastic. It feels a little bit better than normal plastic, uh, but not a giant amount. If you rub your finger over it and you can sort of hear that noise, it's very obviously uh, plastic. It's plastic dressed up in metal clothing. Uh, you've got that nice little speaker grill right down there below. Um, so LG's done a really nice job with their software, and I always sort of liked what LG did. Uh, this Korean version, for whatever it's worth, has crazy carrier bloatware on it. I mean, look at that. Hopefully the US versions are not going to come even close to that, but that is a whole ton of apps. And if you're like, oh, hey, John, just remove them, no big deal. Well, let's go ahead and try one. We'll remove it. You can see LG's UI, and uh, there it is, it came back. So you can't really remove it. You can just sort of remove it for like three seconds before it pops back up on your app tray. So a bit disappointing. You could obviously go through the settings and remove the apps that way, but uh, it's definitely a bit of a convoluted process. We've got universal search built in here, which is really nice to have. And they did a really clean job with it as well. If you want to do Chrome, for example, you can go ahead and just search and it all pops up and pops up really fast. That's the theme of the phone. Everything on here uh, is just fast. But probably what you want to know most about is this here screen. Uh, the screen looks really, really nice, obviously with Quad HD. Uh, I don't think, at least from my initial testing, it looks all that much better though than just a really nice 1080p display. Um, it looks clear, it looks crisp, text looks awesome, images look great, but I don't really notice a difference. So right now it's sort of a, I'm not calling it a gimmick, it's nice to have and sort of makes it a little more future-proof, but if I had a pip this or 1080 screen, it really wouldn't factor that much into my decision, which is a bit on the disappointing side. 
Take a quick second to thank our friends, sponsors, and general good peeps over at lynda.com. You should probably be bettering yourself. I know I should learn something new, learn a new skill. The folks at lynda.com have you covered. They have thousands of engaging, super easy to follow video tutorials. They're taught by just experts in the industry to help you learn things like software, creative, and business skills, all that stuff you might need to maybe start a new career. Membership is super affordable. It starts at just 25 bucks per month, it provides unlimited 24 seven access to all of the courses. You can learn at your own pace from bite-sized tutorials to really comprehensive courses in things like web design, programming, photography, business, audio, video, 3D animation, and kind of the rest of that cool stuff. Give them a shot. Try lynda.com free for seven days by visiting lynda.com slash technobuffalo. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash technobuffalo. Back to this guy. Nothing else about this phone that was disappointing. Um, so LG does sort of multi-window stuff kind of interestingly. If you hold down the back button, uh, you can tap an icon and drag up. So let's say we want to do Chrome and YouTube. Sort of tap it, drag it up there. Chrome's going to launch. Take YouTube, for example, and drag it back down there. And, uh, and then you're going to get sort of both those applications running on top of each other. It's fine. It works. Uh, it's a little bit clunky, but it is there. Um, go back home. Uh, multitasking, sort of they retweak that UI a little bit as well. You can try and swipe them up. They're not going to go anywhere. Uh, if you want to get rid of them, you swipe them off to the left. A bit of a learning curve, not a giant deal, uh, but a very nice looking UI. It reminds me of what HTC has done with Sense. Uh, overall though, they let Android for the most part be Android. They didn't throw a ton of stuff at you. I think what they added is relatively useful. I love the knock feature. You can now use the knock to lock it and all kinds of other stuff. Um, but it's a really nice phone. I uh, will do a separate a video showing the camera. We did a video showing the four capabilities. Uh, the laser focus looks really nice. We'll have a whole gallery of images coming up too when we do the review, so we'll be able to check that out. First impressions of the camera are really good. My first impressions of the phone in general though are awesome. Uh, probably one of the better phones that I've tested. And I've tested some pretty awesome phones. And so speaking of awesome phones I've tested, let's bring those in. Uh, here is the HTC One M8. Go ahead and lock the screen so you look like. They look uh, sort of similar actually, um, but you see the Boom sound speakers and sort of not found here on the G3. Here is complete the trifecta, a Galaxy S5. Uh, and just for fun, let's throw an iPhone 5S on in there as well. You can see what all those suckers look like next to each other. And here is just the iPhone 5S uh, with the G3. It looks like a kid brother that wants to hang along. Uh, certainly way smaller. Uh, a very thin device too. Uh, the G3. So overall, again, really impressed. Looking forward to keep testing it. Uh, maybe my opinion on the screen is going to change that use it a bit more. You know, I like to use my devices for you know, usually at least 10 days before I do a full review. So look for that coming up in, you know, a little over uh, a week and we'll have that out for you guys. Anything in particular you want to see me cover in the review, leave it in the comments or write down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Uh, until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe right here. It'll be the first ones to know whenever new videos get uploaded. We got a ton of stuff. We do phones, tablets, cars, anything that has to do with consumer electronics that has to be plugged in or uses batteries. We review.